I'm not keeping this to myself. I got to get it out. God just gave it to me, but I'm going to release it in the name of Jesus. God says that you are a fighter. God has created you to be a fighter, a fighter in the spirit. But he didn't just say that to me because he told me that a few days ago. And I'm like, God, I don't feel like a fighter right now. This battle was tough. I don't feel like I'm fighting well, to be honest. But God said, you are a fighter. You are a fighter. And that helped me to keep going. And then I heard a voice that said, holy field. I'm like, holy field? First of all, I'm like, God, that was a man. He's like, you're holy field because you are a fighter. And you are holy field because your field is now holy. Hmm. My God. He broke down the name to me. Oh, my God. I was just shedding tears. But it's like, it's, it's, it's not even tears of sadness. It's tears of joy. Ain't no crying right now. Like, I'm so shocked. That he's still talking to me today. Like, I'm just like in, in in such this way because, I mean, I needed it. I really did. But man, I didn't expect this today. I didn't. And when you hear God, it's like, whoa. And it's like, what? Why would you call me Holy Field? Then he broke it down. Holy Field. Can you see the dynamic? Can you see the words inside the word? Inside the last name from Evander Holyfield. I'm going to put a little clip in the end of Evander Holyfield. I'm going to have to. Because, come on now. Holy field. Your field is now holy. The field of your mind, okay? The field of your spirit. The field of your heart is now holy. You have holy ground. You have sown good seeds in your ground. Okay? The ground of your mind where... Your thought processes, because I was even reading Genesis again yesterday. I mean, I was reading Genesis 3, and honestly, I didn't want to pick up the Bible, but I have some notes on it in my house that I did not bring with me. But it's the temptation of my, of the man, the whole, the, 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 oh my God. Bring back, Lord, to me the what you told me so that I can share it. Praise God. Verse 6 says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, verse 6, verse 3 of uh verse 6 of chapter 3 in Jesus' name, that it was pleasant to the eye. This is about the forbidden fruit. Okay, it was pleasing to the eye and, and a tree desirable to make one wise. This is where this is where God spoke to me last night she took from his fruit and ate and she also gave to her husband with her and he ate and this is this is a part and a tree desirable to make one wise so she thought that this forbidden fruit was gonna make her wise when it did the total opposite it filled her up with fear anxiety worry and made them fleshly so now they were not walking in the spirit they were now walking in the flesh and if you're walking in the flesh like we spoke in the other video you have to crucify the flesh use the anointing of christ to crucify the flesh it has to be crucified it has to be killed you shouldn't be walking in it and there's things of the flesh that the, the things of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the desire, everything that is sinful, that is not of God, lust, perversion, um, the love of money, pride, jealousy, fear, anxiety, so many things that is in the flesh that we shouldn't be doing. Okay. Being aggressive to where you are being abusive, violent. You have no self-control. You have no peace. You have no patience. You are you are unlovable and you don't like to love people and you don't know how to even receive love. You don't even set up your life to receive love. You are just an unlovable person because you are just so, you act just crazy and people just don't want to be around you. You know, you have no mercy, no kindness. You're not gentle. You're not wise. You're walking around hurting people all the time with your mouth and your actions. You're just... These are the things that are in the flesh. But if we walk in the spirit of God, we then come into that garden life, that garden of Eden life, where we are eating from the tree of life, 
that's in the garden that is protected nobody could go there physically but we can go there spiritually because we are seated now with christ we have the anointing of christ to help us do this so this wisdom this fake wisdom that that, that, that this obsession of wanting to have this fake wisdom, this diabolical wisdom, this unholy wisdom, okay? This is what she received, and it's in the mind, okay? It started in the mind. This is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's the knowledge. It's the mind. So you can either prepare, you can either have your mind filled with this good pleasurable worldly fruit because inside of every fruit there's a seed so you can have these seeds of worldly thoughts and worldly things or you can have a mind of christ you can take the, the time like the bible says and transform your mind with the living word of god with the holy spirit of god through prayer and through reading god's word you can decide to do that and eventually the bible says that do not faint because in due time you will reap the harvest but we faint through the process we give up too quickly we are not we are not allowing ourselves to be tested and tried we give up because it's too difficult it's too difficult not realizing that in that di difficulty is how the seed is truly cultivated the seed is implanted by the word of God because it's the knowledge, right? For example, the knowledge of God is you have to fear the Lord. You have to be kind. You have to love yourself, love God and love your neighbor. But when it comes to time to love your neighbor, you're like, no, nah, nah, I'm not going to do that. When it, takes, when it comes to time to love God, you're not doing it. When it comes to time, the time to love yourself, I don't know if I should move or not. You're not doing it. And God doesn't want us that way. He's putting mad light into my head. Come on. I didn't even do my hair. People didn't really see that. I got to pick up an order. That's a sign. That's what it is. So to finish, guys, get your field in order. Get your mind in order. Get your mind right. Transform your mind with the word of God. And that when, when you do that, when God sees you taking the time to change the way you think, to think like him rather than the way you want to think, stop being selfish, stop being jealous, stop being angry and bitter because you don't have something or because your neighbor, you think your neighbor has whatever reasons you give yourself for thinking the way you think. Even if you think you have a reason, God is not looking at, oh, do you have a reason? God was not like to Adam, oh, you did have a reason for eating it because your wife gave it to you. No, he cursed him too. There's no reason to not walk in the ways of God. God gives us time to grow. God, you know, understands when things are difficult, but he's still expecting the best from us. He might give us time, but he's still expecting us to climb the mountain. He's still expecting us to climb the mountain like Moses did, to speak to him about that situation and that difficulty so that he can bless you to walk in his ways so that he can tell you, listen, you got to take those sandals off. This place is holy ground. You got to take with, take off whatever you came with and be prepared to be made new and to receive something that you've never received before. Get your hands off of it and let God do it. And when you have that attitude, you are then on your way to transformation through the Holy Spirit of God. So yes, the battle is in the mind. But God is not okay with us leaving the battle to him in absolutely every way. We have to prepare our mind. We have to cultivate it. We have to prepare it for the Lord. We have to come to God prepared to change. We have to understand, like, you know, I got to leave this behind. I got to get unstuck. I got to put the, replace the right, the wrong words the wrong thoughts with the right word, right thoughts, the wrong words with the right words out of my mouth. Because the power of life or death is in the tongue. Come on, people. Come on. 
we really have to be careful with the way we think because the way we think ends up being the way we feel, ends up being the way we speak. Right, because out of the abundance of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, the the mouth speaks. Uh, but what are you believing? Why are you feeling like that? Because you are believing a lie, or you believing a truth. You know, it's no it, when you're speaking good stuff. That's awesome. Kudos to you. Amazing. Ten stars, A plus. But not everybody's doing that out here. And throughout the day, there's struggles, and God doesn't want us to live a mediocre life. God wants us to live in joy, to be able to be to smile in the midst of wolves, in the midst of your difficulties, in the midst of the thieves, in the midst of and what what happened to Holyfield? What happened to Holyfield? Um, praise God! If you ain't keeping it holy, then you ain't fighting. If you ain't keeping it holy, you are not fighting. Keep it holy. Keep it holy in your mind. We all know what happened to Evander Holyfield. Mike Tyson put his ear off on in that fight, and that's what's, that's gonna happen. Haters are gonna hate. The devil's gonna hate. People are gonna come after you. They're gonna try to bite your ear off. They're gonna try to take you apart, break you down to pieces. But God has resurrection power. It doesn't matter what they do to you. The power of God resides in you, and he's going to make everything all right. He's going to flip the script. He's going to be like, okay, next chapter? And th that chapter is going to be your victory chapter. Where people, where the enemy is going to try to come at you one way, and he's going to flee seven ways. So these people that are coming against you in all type of ways are going to flee in whichever way they came from. They're not even going to know where to go. Okay? They're just going to have to be like, whoa what was that what was that okay this is this is what god is about okay holding up god's name is not in vain fighting a good fight of faith is not in vain keeping your mind holy your heart holy your spirit holy is not in vain tired here is Tyson. The guy that looks worn is Tyson. Not holy. Nothing fights, and he is not ready to fight the 12 real hard. Did those four previous fights since prison prepare Holyfield properly? Not a hair. Not a hair. So getting through the defense. He, he comes down. Look at that. Right through. I mean, when's the last Hughes time? Hughes going to this fight. I think they pulled about 40 riders across the country. One good fight. And he's proving it again here. Look at this total. What have I got to do to get this guy? It's a nice right hand by Mike, but he's not following. See, Vayner's ducking. And he rolls with his right hand. There you see him again trying to rock and roll. Mike's got For the first time in a long time. He... What were the odds on a draw? Really handicapped. Oh, both on these. Mm. Oh, straight right hand by Evander. Oh. He got Mike's attention. Mike's firing back, and now the slugfest ensues.